I mean, I can press record, okay? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiru wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyatina a'malina man yaddillahu falamudillala wa man yudlila hadiyala. Ashadu anna la ilaha illa allahu wa jahu la shurika lahu wa shtanna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh. O praise to Allah, we seek his aid and his assistance and ask for his forgiveness. And we seek refuge in Allah from the evil of our souls and from the evil of our actions. Whomever Allah guides, no one will be able to mislead him. Whomever he leads astray, no one, nobody can guide him. I testify that there is no deity worthy of the worship except Allah alone without partner and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave and messenger. Amabad. So sisters, today the name we are looking at is Al Hakam. And before I go into the name, um, an explanation of the name, what I'd like to ask you is this. How often have you noticed in your thoughts when something happens? that you're asking the question, why? Why? So if often you're wondering why, then please, yeah, okay, please let me know in the chat box. Does this come up for you often? Why? Okay. Quite a few of you, alhamdulillah, okay. What about it's not fair. How often does this come up for us? Often, yes, sometimes. How often do we hear children saying, it's not fair? That's an always, huh? <laughs> All the time, yes. <laughs> right. Now, Here's another question. If there is something that has happened when you reflect back on your life and you just don't understand why it happened, I want you to just cast your mind back on that. What happened, you know, on a situation that you just, if you look back, you just do not understand why that happened. You just can't make sense of it. Do you have that, sisters? Something in your life that you just can't make sense of? Yeah, okay, a lot of yeses. Okay, then inshallah, from all of your responses, I pray that you will find our discussion today most helpful. Because this is really what we're bringing to you here. It's not just the name of Allah that we are learning about, reflecting on the qualities of Allah, but actually how does that impact your life? How does that help you to find peace, salam, in your life? So, al-hakam means the judge, the giver of justice, the arbitrator. He is, Allah, the one who delivers justice in every situation to everyone. Al-Hakam never wrongs anyone and is never oppressive. He is the only true judge. No one can overturn his judgment and no one can ever appeal his decree. The giver of justice. Allah is the giver of justice. Al-Hakam comes from the root ha kaf mim, sorry, ha kaf mim, which means to the attribute of judging, being wise, passing a verdict, and preventing or restraining people from wrongdoing. So let me repeat that. This root, hakam, refers to judging, being wise passing verdicts and preventing or restraining from people doing wrong. 
Why is that important? We looked at a few days ago when my sisters covered Al Hakim. Al Hakim and Al Hakam are very linguistically come from the same root. They're very similar. Al Hakam refers to the verb delivering justice. So it's the one who delivers the justice with wisdom and in mer immense mercy. So I want you to think about this. Allah is the one who delivers justice with wisdom, perfect wisdom, and immense mercy. And Hakim, which we covered, Al-Hakim, that in which was Allah's name, Al-Hakim, we looked at the nature of the possessor of wisdom. So what is the nature of Allah that he possesses all this wisdom? So the similar but actually al hakam is referring to the you know the way that allah delivers the justice to us that it refers to allah's totality of power to judge he's the only one who has the power to judge to arbitrate with perfect justice which cannot be compared to any judging by any one of um, any of his created beings See, we will make mistakes. I used to be a solicitor and I was looking at this and I was thinking, yes, there are so many court cases that, you know, the judge does not have all of the knowledge. The, you know, and as a, a lawyer, it's interesting when we're making a case, actually, because you would put, you would twist, it's not twist, but you would put a slant on every piece of evidence that would make it look in your favour. And then the other side would do that. And what you have between the two are two such different stories that they do not look like they, be, they belong to the same case. They're just two opposing kind of stories. And the judge doesn't know the truth between that. The truth lies somewhere in between. So making judgments amongst creation, we're biased, we're looking to succeed we're looking to make points in our favor we're looking we're not looking at pure justice unfortunately the legal system here is about winning not about justice but in allah's judgment it's not about winning it's actually about justice for all because allah knows what we are, you know, all that is hidden and all that is revealed. Allah knows what's coming and what has been. Allah is judging, given knowledge of the entire scenario. So that's why our judgment can never compare to Allah's judgment. That makes Allah the best of judges. Judging without judgment, yeah, Allah judges without judgment, just complete fairness. And he has complete legislative power to decree, and no one can overturn what Allah has decreed. So he is the best of judges, and he has the power to judge. And no one, no one can overturn his decree. But when he does legislate for us, Al-Hakam is never burdensome and never unfair. He laid down rules to protect everyone's rights, men and women, the righteous and the sinner, the believer and the unbeliever. You know, what is so beautiful in Allah's justice is that he is so merciful that even when he when a Muslim, you know, somebody reverts to Islam and accepts Islam, all of their sins are forgiven. You know, like Allah gives more, not less, not the minimum. That's why the judgment comes with the mercy and all of his other attributes, the most generous, the most kind. And in fact, on a day of judgment, you know, none, none of... Um, none of our deeds will be enough. None of us will enter Jannah except by the mercy of Allah. So all of his attributes come in to his judgment. 
Now, how does this help us? Helps us to know Allah, helps us to reflect on Allah being the ultimate judge, the one who judges without judgment, the one who's merciful in his judgment, who will never be unfair. But there are so many times in our lives, as I asked you at the beginning, that we have felt the question arise in our minds, why? It's unfair. And in fact, I remember a while ago struggling with something amongst um, amongst my siblings and was I was really stuck in, in the mindset of it's unfair. The situation in our family and I felt something was very unfair towards me. And it kept weighing me down, it kept bothering me for a while because I didn't know how to make, you know, the people involved treat me fairly or be fair or see that they were being unfair. And as long as I focused on that, in fact, it quite consumed me. I didn't feel the same peace that you've probably been feeling when you're connecting with Allah. Because you see, in the moment when we're thinking about the unfairness of the creation, we fail to see the fairness of the creator. It's very short term when we're looking at a situation. We're looking at it through the eyes of now, through this current problem, this actual situation. But we don't know what we don't know. We don't know what's going to happen in the future. We do not know how it is good for us. We do not know how that's going to weigh on our scales in, on the day of judgment how that's going to impact the level in Jannah that we, we are raised in. We don't know. What we think is unfair often turns out to be such a big gift from us, for us, from Allah. And whether we know it, whether we see it in this life, this is where knowing Al-Hakam will reassure you, sisters, that you don't need to know. You don't need to understand. You don't need to make anyone treat you fairly. Yes, boundaries are necessary, you know, where they are. But, you know, forcing people to do what they will, they, they, to see something that they don't see, forcing them to um, behave in a certain way towards you, that's not within our control. In fact, Allah says he will not change the condition of a person until they change within themselves. Now you're outside, the people around you, what they are doing, that's, out, that's your circumstances, that's your condition. A lie is in control of that. The only thing that we are in control of is ourselves, what we do. So from a, physical, from a psychological point of view, we can look for a lie in that situation. Okay, they, the creation might be treating me unfairly, but a lie will never be unfair to me. Allah is al hakam He is the perfect judge. He will deal with this in the best way for me. And trusting in him, even when, you've, when you have felt you have been treated unjustly, don't despair. Fully rely on his judgment because his judgment will come. Take comfort that even when people are unjust, you will get your justice from al hakam And there is fairness in what is happening in the long-term view, in the unseen that we don't know. Does that help, sisters? What comes up for you as I'm sharing this example? So just a few messages to, to let me know. Is it helping you? with the situation that you're struggling with? Yes, definitely less for you to do. You've just got to psychologically just turn yourself back to Allah. So in your mind, in your heart, look for Allah in it. Even when you're focused on the injustice, focus on the most just, al hakam Farah says, Allah's got my back. Absolutely, he always has. Allah is just, the most just. Never, never unjust. So Sri Mina says, sometimes we want the justice in this dunya. And the thing is, there is justice in this dunya and in the akhirah. But we might not see it. We might not know it. 
In fact, something that I would share with you is, you know what, there, there is even within us an inbuilt justice system. Have you ever done anything that you know you shouldn't have done or that wasn't fair to someone? And it might even be the way you spoke harshly to your child. And in that, you felt really bad afterwards. It just bothered you. It's from that place that we seek forgiveness from others and from Allah. An inbuilt justice system, which means that whoever wrongs another is always there, reminding them, taking away that ease because they know they've done something wrong. So actually there is justice. Yeah, when we wrong someone, we feel bad. Absolutely. That is the inbuilt justice system. Now, we might push it away, we might block it, we might try and drown it out, but it does steal away your peace. So there is justice in this world, and there is justice in the hereafter. The key here, sisters, is do you need to see the justice to know that Allah is most just? Or can you have faith in Allah? Can you trust in him? Can you leave it with him? Because that is the key for us to bring together the name of Allah into our lives and into our problems. Yeah, Allah is taking care of everything for us, even the justice. And you know, when I was thinking about this situation where I was thinking, well, you know, family members aren't being fair. In fact, it all dropped for me the moment I realized Allah will never be unfair to me. Allah will never be unfair to me. It just dropped. I found my peace again. Because I turned back to Allah and I remembered who Allah is. Right? So, there is that. And I have a few more tips for you, inshallah, as how to, for you, to be able to bring al hakam into your life. Um, but I hope that that, this, that discussion really helps with anything that you are struggling with. And um, anything that you're struggling. Because often we do feel that you know, others are causing us injustice, they're oppressing us, they're being unfair to us. That is very, very common situation to find yourself in. And I pray that in our discussion today, those feelings are alleviated for you. Inshallah. Okay, so different things that you can do to bring al hakam into your life. There's quite a few. I think one of the things that I would say to you, sisters, is always be fair and equal when you're judging others. Whenever you're in a position to judge between par parties, for example, a family affair or two children arguing, always be equal and judge and, and, and just. Whenever you judge between people, judge with justice. Don't look, don't go into the situation with your own judgment. You know, who is right, who is wrong, they shouldn't have done that. Actually, just speak to them. Just listen. Hear what they have to say. Not, you know, the case that they're making, not just the way that they're either articulating themselves or aggressively explaining themselves. Don't look at that. Ask Allah to show you. Ask Al Hakam to help you judge. Ask Him to help you see what would be the, the, the wisest and most merciful judgment that you could make in that situation. Often we're asked to referee between children. And in this opportunity, I used to hate it. I used to think, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not a parent here. I'm just a referee. And actually, being in those situations gives you the opportunity to demonstrate the qualities of al hakam to your children. 
ask Al Hakam to protect you and guide you, protect you from the injustice at the hands of others. So if you are in that situation, then ask him to protect you from their injustice and call upon Al Hakam to make you just towards others too. Never object to the decree of Al Hakam. Now, this is one where we struggle. When we're saying, why? Why did this happen? Why is it like that? Actually, who are we speaking to? This goes off every day. Okay, who are we talking to when we're saying, why? We can only really be talking to Allah, right? We don't realize it, so we carry on the chitty chatter in our heads and we're asking, well, why? I don't understand. How could this happen? Why is this happening? But actually, are we in that questioning, asking, you know, objecting to the decree of al Hakam? Because when he decrees something, he does so with perfect wisdom. But when we complain about our fate and we question, why do I have to go through this? Why is this happening? then we are objecting to the decree of Al-Hakam. So only people who don't understand the names of Allah and attributes will question him because we don't understand. But now that we are seeking this understanding, may Allah guide us and help us to never complain and ask why. To trust in Al-Hakam. Because maybe that thing is happening so that we may learn to wakul trust and reliance upon Allah. So those are just a few points, sisters, I wanted to make. Our time is up. Um, there are a few comments I'll read out. And, um, and so if you want me to read anything else out, please add them now. Um, just to share some of your reflections. Um, we need to trust in his justice, especially when it doesn't make sense to us. Yeah, it's not going to always. In fact, even if we can make some sense of it, we're never going to fully know. And here's the trust here, the aspect of trust and blind faith. Do we need to know? Do we need to see the justice? Um, Sister says, it's comforting to know that Allah will never let you down. Yeah, never. Never, ever. That's just not amongst the qualities of Allah to let his servants down. Sister says, Al Hakam goes side by side with being patient and in, in trusting in God's justice. Yes. That patience comes when we trust. That patience comes when we trust and we know who Allah is. What Tremina says, it's almost like when we feel that they are let off the hook, you know, um, that they are let off the hook. But when but actually, Allah is all aware. It may only be a temporary off the hook. Yeah. Actually, no one's going to ever be off the hook except if they seek forgiveness. Then yes, Allah may forgive them, but he will be most judge, most just in what he does. We don't know. I knew Allah knows the matters of the heart. Sister Rosina said, yes, definitely was thinking I struggle with this. You want revenge sometimes when people hurt you. Yeah. And it can happen. When we're really focused on the hurt, we want some sort of action. We want some sort of acknowledgement, some sort of apology, something, something to, to prove it wasn't okay. Right? But the thing is, it wasn't okay that someone treats someone else unfairly or unjustly, that doesn't make it okay. They are accountable for that. But what makes it okay is that Allah is taking care of you. He is a hakam and he is going to give you justice. And he is taking care of all of your troubles. You know, he is raising you through this trial. He is gifting you through this trial. That's what makes the trial okay even if the action of someone is, is not acceptable and wrong. If we focus on Allah, 
we can get through the trial and we can gain that opportunity of having relied upon Allah, having trusted in Allah, and inshallah raising our status through that trial. Or we can get stuck on the unfair treatment and be consumed in what we need to move on from it. And in that we lose the opportunity to rely upon Al-Hakam. Okay, so there's quite a few more state, uh, sisters' comments here, but I'm conscious of the time. Um, let's see. So if the injustice continues towards you from the other person, we just ignore them and trust in Allah. And inshallah, Allah will show justice in dunya and akhirah. Does that mean we take no action? Once he says asking. You set boundaries for yourself. Because, you know, we have to set boundaries for ourselves. But at the same time, psychologically, you know, we can set boundaries. We can keep a distance where appropriate. But sometimes we can't stop people from getting their comments across or, you know, what they, you know, the message they want to get. But we don't have to. We can say, yes, that's, that's not appropriate. I don't find that acceptable. That's you setting a boundary if that's respectful and appropriate for you to say. So we can set boundaries, but it's about finding that peace that even if they continue, even if they are unjust in what they're thinking and saying, that it doesn't mean that a lie is being unfair to you. Sister Meru says, when we teach our infants to walk, we know that they will fall, but take that risk for them to learn. We don't know how the infant is feeling. They may be, they may think that they are being let down, but they will keep trying until they're able to walk. We don't always need to understand what's happening. We just need to trust in the judgment of al hakam SubhanAllah, how perfect is Allah. Alhamdulillah. So, we've come to the end. Jazakallah khair, sisters. I'm going to end it there, but we're going to open the chat box. And in that, um, please continue to share your reflections, maybe how you're now trying to let go and rely upon Allah for your justice. Um, I pray that this brings you some relief and some understanding on how you can move forward. May Allah accept it from us, and may Allah guide us to what is best and pleasing to Him. Um, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, my sisters. So, I'll end it there. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Wa alaikum salam. Wa alaikum salam.